All right, lads, welcome back to another video. My voice is still recovering, but hopefully it doesn't sound too bad. Today, we're taking a look at the MiG-29. This is the 913 variant. Just like you, I have no idea what that means. But anyway, the MiG-29 is the newest jet in the Soviet tech tree, and arguably probably one of the most dominant jets currently in the game, at least in theory. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's cover some of the basics. The MiG-29 comes after the MiG-23 MLD, and seeing as that plane got R60Ms in the last update, you probably are better grinding out the MiG-29 by using the MiG-23. The MiG-29 itself is the first rank 8 in the Soviet tech tree. It also sits at battery rating 11.7 for arcade, realistic and simulator. To unlock the plane you'll have to grind out 410,000 research points before unlocking it for the cost of 1,100,000 silver lions. After the initial purchase cost, you will also have to put it in your lineup for the cost of an additional 310,000 silver lions. And for the expert and ace qualifications, which are very important in top tier jet combat, it's 1,100,000 silver lions for the expert qualification and 3,400 golden eagles for the ace qualification. When fully spaded, the repair cost is also pretty much dead on 15,000 silver lions. So while the MiG-29 is good to look at and arguably fun to play, it certainly isn't very economical. Even a two kill game with a death is likely for you to lose Silver Lions, so it might be quite difficult for free to play players to actually consistently play this jet, especially with the dominance of the F-14 and the F-16 in the meta right now. But anyway, as I'm sure you've seen, the MiG-29 did suffer a little bit upon initial release, which led to Guardian giving this plane the R-27ER. This missile is much faster than the AIM-7M and AIM-7Fs, giving the MiG-29 arguably the best radar-guided missile in War Thunder. But has this change been enough? Is the MiG-29 still suffering? And is it even worth grinding at the minute? Well, if you'd like to know the answer to that question, boys, stick around for the rest of the video. Alright lads, welcome back. Cracking straight on with it, this plane is powered by two Klimov RD-33 engines. At military power, they each produce 3,920 kilos of thrust, and when after burning, that power increases to 6,820 kilos. These engines give the MiG-29 a very good top speed as well as acceleration. The thrust to weight ratio isn't as good as the F-16, but it's very similar, and you can't really have any complaints against the MiG-29's flying characteristics. Just like the F-16, it is capable of going supersonic and getting to those top speeds very quickly. Also like the F-16, it doesn't really like to manoeuvre that well at high speeds. So the MiG-29 is certainly most flexible at uh, below 800 km per hour, kind of like the F-16. I'd say that the MiG-29 is a little bit better in higher speeds, like 800 plus type area. It's a little bit more agile, but dogfighting is pretty much dead in War Thunder, so you don't really want to be getting down to those low speeds anyway unless you are the last two people alive on the match, or you've got a lot of separation between you and the rest of the enemy team. So while the MiG-29 is good at turning, you unfortunately aren't going to outturn an AIM-9L. So what other countermeasures do we have? Well, we have 60 large countermeasures. These usually aren't good enough to just use one fuller to counter an AIM-9L, apart from on the head-on aspect. In the rear aspect against an AIM-9L, you are going to have to cut your afterburner and then spam quite a few fullers to defeat the missile. 60 floors is quite a lot, but considering you are going to have to use half floors, half uh, chaff, you do burn through them quite easily. Enough about the MiG-29's defensive measures, what about its offensive capabilities? Well, the MiG-29 is fitted with the number 19 radar, as well as an IRST mounted just above the nose. You can use the IRST to slave the infrared-seeking missiles on the plane, but obviously you cannot use the radar-guided missiles with the IRST. The radar has a standard search function, a pulse doppler mode, as well as a track while scan. The head on mode is best used when enemies are coming straight towards you. And while the track while scan is nice, there aren't really any weapons that you can use with the track while scan at the minute. For simulator players, we also have an IFF, or identify friend and foe, as well as having a BVR and air combat maneuver mode. Then move on to the capabilities of the pilot. 
and the avionics of the Mi-29 are quite good. We have CCIP for the cannons, rockets and bombs, as well as a CCRP for the bombs. The Mi-29 also features an RWR, which is mainly going to be used by teammates to piss you off by giving you a constant spike on takeoff, but it will also give you a warning when you are being targeted by the F-14 or the F-16. We then move on to the main firepower of this plane, and I do apologise if my voice is starting to break, my throat is getting really sore about 5 minutes into recording. I am used to suffering though, I've been playing the MiG-29 for the last couple of days, and the F-16s and F-14s haven't got any easier to kill really. Anyway, the MiG-29 is fitted with the 30mm GSH-30-1. This has a very high fire rate, with only 150 rounds of ammunition. You can tap fire this gun pretty effectively though, so those 150 rounds can be made to go quite a long way. The gun is mounted a little funky, so at close ranges it can be quite hard to aim, but the gun does hit like an absolute freight train, so one or two hits is pretty much all that is needed to get a kill. The ammunition in the belts is also pretty good, you have an APHE round, which makes it pretty easy to attack ground targets as well. This makes the stock grind actually pretty easy, as you can target bunkers, pillboxes, as well as medium tanks. The 30mm gun on this point is absolutely no joke at all. We can also carry along several ground strike options. The S8 KOs are dumbfire rockets, they travel pretty fast at 650m per second and can penetrate 420mm of armour. While pretty effective if you launch a salvo, the low independent warhead of only 1.69 kilos does make them pretty ineffective if you fire just one or two. The same cannot be said about the S24Bs. These are much larger, containing 25.5 kilos of TNT in their warhead. While you can only carry four of them, don't forget this plane is armed with a CCIP for the can rockets, so you can get pretty accurate kills with this plane using these rocket systems. I think there are better options available for CAS or ground strike in the Russian tech tree, but if you really need the Mi-29 to be a ground support aircraft as well, it can definitely be used in that way. This is also made easier by the vast amount of bombs able to be carried by the MiG-29. As you can see from this image, we have a wide selection of bombs, none of which are really that impressive to be honest. There are several 500 pound kilo bombs that are slightly different in some way. I think they're just different modernizations. Not really too sure why Gaijin spent so much time modeling all this in, but I guess it is nice to have. But if you are carrying bombs, you do obviously lose the two inner pylons. So you could only take along two R60s or two R60Ms on the outer wingtips. We then come on to the Air to Air missiles themselves, and when stock, this plane will only have access to the R60s. This is quite a big letdown. I guess some of the F16s do only have the AM9Gs when stock, but the F16 ADF that gets access to two AM9Ls when stock, which is a big upgrade compared to the R60s. So your stock missile, the R60, is first unlocked at battle rating 9.7, and you are at battle rating 11.7. So it is a little bit of a struggle fest when you first start playing this plane. But remember, you do have good ground strike capabilities, so just fly around and get some pillbox kills. I know it sucks, but it's what you gotta do. Luckily for you though, we do also unlock the R60Ms. These are modernized versions of the R60s, giving them an all aspect seeker. Just like the AIM-9L, these are easily flared now for some reason. If an enemy is paying attention to you and they cut their afterburner and flur, you almost certainly are never going to get a kill by using any air to air missile in the game now. The R60Ms in combination with the MiG-29's helmet mounted display though, is a very powerful setup. The helmet mounted display basically allows you to acquire an IR lock off bar sight. This makes it great for dogfighting, however I haven't found it to be that useful to be honest. It is very handy to have in some situations. But considering most War Thunder matches are now pretty much head-on machines, it isn't a huge advantage. I'd rather fly an F-16 than the MiG-29, even though the F-16 doesn't get a helmet-mounted display. So while a nice feature to have, it's certainly not as overpowered as it was implied that it was going to be. We then also have the R-27T and the R-27R. The T is an IR guided missile, which is also all aspect. They are basically just large versions of an R-60M. Not literally, but that is basically how they function. The R27R is basically the same as the T, but it requires a radar lock from the plane's radar system. Before the introduction of the R27ER, there was a valid debate between which of the R27T and the R27R you should carry. But after the introduction of the R27ER, there is no dispute anymore. The ER version is by far the most powerful missile that the MiG-29 has access to. 
and should be carried as soon as you unlock it. The R27ER is also semi-active radar homing, but it also has inertial navigation and data link. The inertial navigation means that even if the radar loses lock and the missile is only a couple of seconds away from impact, it will generally still guide itself onto a target. This is because the missile will fly to the last known location of the enemy or its predicted path. So if you are missile jousting against a MiG-29 and you kill him first, make sure to roll out of the way of the incoming missile, as even if he's dead and you are flying in the same path, the missile will generally still track you. The ER missile is also a constant wave which makes it quite hard to notch, and the thing that makes this missile so powerful is its maximum speed of Mach 5.8. This is much faster than the M7F or M. It means that if an F-16 and a MiG-29 both fire at each other with semi-active radar homing, the MiG-29 is guaranteed to win every time, as the ER missile is just so much faster than the American contemporary. While this does give the MiG-29 the advantage in a one-on-one -on -one fight, in practice the F-14s with their up to six M7Ms can kind of just outspam you, bearing in mind you can only carry two of the R-27 ERs. The other four hard points will either be R60s or R60Ms, which does limit the performance of the MiG-29 quite a bit. Overall though, I'd say that the MiG-29 is nowhere near as good as the F-16 or the F-14. I think the MiG-29 could receive its R73s and still be kind of balanced. The F-16s and the F-14s would still have the early game advantage, but if you let a MiG-29 get close to you, it would shred you with its IR missiles. This is pretty realistic and what would have happened in real life. There's a reason that the Americans decided to stay as far away from enemy jets as possible, relying on long-range anti-aircraft missiles. However, that change does run the risk of making every jet in the game, apart from the F-14, F-16 and MiG-29, basically dead on arrival or dead in the meta. But that kind of already is the case. If you aren't playing an F-14 or an F-16, there's pretty much no point you really playing. It's very hard to compete against those planes. It can be done, but you'd have to be a much better pilot than I am. Anyway though, lads, the MiG-29 is a good plane. Its ER missiles are very good. It just doesn't really have the legs to stay in the fight. Once you've fired your two R-27Rs, or ER, sorry, you will struggle to get kills with your R-60Ms, especially if you're going up against an opponent who knows to drop his afterburner and pop flurs. So it is a little bit of a struggle playing the MiG-29, I'd rather be playing an F-14 or an F-16, but I'd say it is still worth grinding out the MiG-29, it's a good fun jet, and Guardian probably is going to give it the upgraded missiles in the future, so it might be a good investment to grind it out now, instead of later and fearing missing out. Anyway lads, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who's watching this video, if you liked it please do consider leaving a like and subscribing, and be sure to let me know down below in the comments what vehicle you guys like to see reviewed next. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my YouTube members. I'm not going to be able to read them all out because my voice is about to destroy, but I know that I do appreciate you and I tell you all on live stream all the time. Anyway, boys, I'm going to go and get back into bed. Don't feel like I've swallowed a razor blade. So anyway, boys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.